Welcome back to the boat cheat. Today we're looking at life jacket servicing. It's really, really easy to do this yourself. And we're going to show you how to service five different types of life jacket. Don't forget, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button and help us grow. I've got 11 life jackets to test here. So the first thing I've done is go through them all and open them up and check whether they're manual or automatic. This first one's a manual, so I'll put that one to one side. Go back to the rest of them. The next lot, they're all, the others are automatic. I've gone to the side with the pull cord on it and I've opened up the stole just to check the date on the trigger units. And there's 10 of these and all of these are out of date, so they all need to be changed. So the first thing I'm going to do before I carry on and service the life jackets is order the trigger units to make sure I've got those when we're going to reassemble. Then we're going to inflate all the stoles. We don't want to cause damage to the stole when we check it, so we use dry air from a pump or a leisure inflator just to make sure that we, when we uh, evacuate it at the end of the test, there's no moisture left inside. We clean the outside of the unit before we start. We inflate, we leave 24 hours and then we reassemble. But now we've done all the trigger units, the next thing to check whilst we're going shopping is that all the gas cylinders are intact. So that one has a visual inspection, it's good. On the side it has a minimum weight, gross weight 144 grams. So I stick it on the scales, 145, that's good, the gas is all there. Drop it back in place, that's good to go. Do the same for all of the others. Replace any cylinders that need replacing while we're replacing the trigger unit. Okay, once the life jackets have all been left inflated for 24 hours, so we're certain they're not leaking, the next thing is to put them back together and to inspect them as we do. So I'm going to start with this um, manual life jacket here, which is rather a large one. Um, it's got a manual trigger, so I'm checking for a green indication on the manual lever. There is no um, trigger unit on this, and I have already weighed all of the gas cylinders and all as well. So I'm over the pump hose to the suction line, turn the life jacket around so it fits and I've put on the smaller nozzle so that it will fit into the tube. The main thing here is to not snag the stole on the zip, even though it's only a plastic zip. You don't want to snag it and cause it to have a tear in it so that when you do need it, it's not working properly. So what I tend to do is to run my finger along the inside, put the zip over my hand, and then there's no chance of snagging the stole on the zip. The other one is to avoid twisting it. Most of them are fixed in so that you can't really twist them. You'd have to try quite hard, but you do need to avoid deforming it so that it doesn't make it slower to open should it be needed. There we go. And the other one with this one is it's got to have the valve turned around so you can see the indicator to see it's not operated. Like that. There we go. This one's got a sight glass in the, in the casing, so obviously we want to make sure that's working and it's visible from the outside. Finally, we make sure that the toggle is visible and accessible at the end of the zip. Now, 
that's supposed to go down the outside of the zip, and I think it's going through the inside of the zip. Yeah, it is. Let's put that back through there. There we go. So there's a good one. The, the fitting is designed to put the toggle outside the zip, but for whatever reason, it had got rolled over and snagged up in the zip. So if I just carried on, it would have been trapped in the zip and it wouldn't have worked very easily if it had been pulled. But now it's free, so it will be able to open very straightforward. There we go. So the zip gets done all the way to the end and then, without touching the toggle, you just tuck the end back up inside, keeping the toggle out of the way so it doesn't snag. And it's sorted. That's that one done. Again, no sign of a loss of pressure. Um, good inspection. Green trigger. No, that manual trigger's not been operated. This one needed a change of trigger, so I'm going to do that one now. With the triggers, the date marked on them says change by and then a month and a year. Advice from my local Chandlers, who's a guy who knows a lot better than I do, is that the triggers work way beyond their supposed end date. So it's a matter for you whether or not you wish to change it. He recommends that it's not necessary to change them on the date. And he demonstrates this using a mug of water to people because of the fact that it's quite wasteful to just change them unnecessarily. But in any case, having a trigger unit is one of those things that some people like and some people don't. Um, there are good reasons for not having a trigger. For example, if you're sailing in, in a sort of boat where you'd struggle to get back on board if the life jacket went off. For example, if you're solo sailing. On the other hand, I'm of the view that when I fall in the water, I want it to go off regardless. Uh, everyone's got their own views. And depending on how important you see the trigger unit, you may or may not decide that you want to change that exactly on the day. So again, manual trigger, green, water trigger, green, all is good. So it's important to note this is folded so that the lanyard can come out of the bottom. If you don't do it that way, then it's not going to be easy for it to run. So you fold the bottom of the, of the stole until it's up beside the, uh, the cylinder, and then we roll the rest of it into place like that. That way, the operating knob and the, and the lanyard on, it, on the end of it are sticking out of the end of the unit. Just like that. Again, we make sure that the lanyard doesn't get snagged as we put the zip back in out of the way. So I hold that against the case with one hand, tucking the zip away with the other, like that. Again, we follow the same protocol for the creases so we know that it goes away the way it came out. Again, we avoid trapping the, the unit with our finger with the zip by keeping our fingers in the way, all the way up. There we go, particularly on the corners, across the top, turn it around to the other side. Velcro parts here are quite important because they take some of the load off the zip They're the, where the bits where it gets warm because this is it these zips are designed to be pulled apart by the, the um, stole inflator so you can easily pull them apart accidentally when you're doing the harnesses up or putting them on if you don't have the velcros attached so make sure that those velcros over the top of the zip are in place because they are what stops it popping open The stole is all folded away. We can tuck the harness and the zip back inside on that side. 
check them over and that's another one done. So we'll take a seat go down next. Okay, again, no sign of loss of pressure. It's all still intact. We have a green manual telltale which is intact. I've got a new unit to go on there, 2027. Whistles in place, there's no light on this type, and should deflate. <laughs> Covers back on the uh, inflation tube, and now it's a question of rolling down the top first on the Seago. And I prefer to get the toggle out there, really. That toggle is used for securing it into its hanger if you have the hanger. Uh, we don't actually use the hanger, so I'm going to put the toggle out of the way out the back. Um, this was in place, that's folded up. This one's folded across. It's a very straightforward unit, this one. Because the stole is part of the actual unit itself. Very, very easy to put them back together. Together, nice and easy again check the harness check the webbing all is good and that one's done so this is a, a different size of type yet again this is a crew um, nice little sort of life jacket this one so while I'm here this one has got an e-perg on it we really like using these PLBs there we've each got one if one of us goes over the side they will tell everybody where we are what I just have to check on this is that the battery is in date. Battery May 2027. That's okay then. Good. So the e is in, uh, the PLB is in date. So we can put this one back together. Uh, before we do, the inflation tube is all good. There's no sign of loss of pressure. The whistle's in place. Coming around this side, looking at the inflation system, we've weighed the cylinder and that's good. It's got a green telltale on the... Um, cylinder and I've got a new trigger unit for this one dated 2027 which is going in place now okay green green all is good triggers in place Back together and deflate. Okay, we tidy it up as best we can, try and make it go back in the same way as it came out so it doesn't snag. Best way to do that is to get it laid flat and then to look at the creases and copy those creases. So it's a little bit more complicated because it's folded away quite bit of origami in here. There we go, like that. That's the way, that's it. And again, we've got to make sure when we do this, I normally start with the side with the trigger on it, that the trigger must be laid so that it's not through the zip. That way it can't be snagged. And then we put the stole over the top. And we start at the bottom, bottom of the zip and we go away from the, the end and we keep the end from snagging by putting our finger in the way when we get to any pinch points. Now this one, because this one's hard to open and it's got a strange uh, stopper halfway up which stops the zip going all the way around. So what we have to do with this one is to go up and then back down again like that. And put the Velcro on to stop it going anywhere. And tuck the zip away. Again, making sure we don't snag the cable, the uh, lanyard. Setting it off. There we go. That's up in the way. That will be easily pulled. Now we need to do the other side. Again, there's a bit of origami going on here. There we go. Just like that. It's actually fairly straightforward. And then we can operate this zip the normal, the back to front way again because it's sadly it's again it doesn't undo unless you do it on this one. I don't know why. I think it might have been installed back to front. 
if anyone knows why it is on these crews that the zips work backwards like this, tell me. Because you have to, in order to open the thing up, you've got no choice but to pop the zip. Which means you've then got to run it back over against itself in order to reset it. And it's the only one that's like it, so I'm wondering why that's the case. Maybe ours is just made incorrectly, I don't know. Folds, there we go. So down to the velcro section, there we go. Do it back up again and then close the zip. Okay, tuck the zip away. 